Hi guys, welcome back again to another series of uh, the story of history where uh, this is Ranganathan S. Venkontula. I'm dealing with some of the most important series of uh, governor generals and viceroys who have uh, established the state of uh, India. So some of these were good viceroys, some of these were bad viceroys. We'll have a quick overview of who these were, what are their contributions, how the sequence of viceroys ended in India. You can follow me on YouTube. Uh, so YouTube, you can search me as uh, Real Motivation Monk on Instagram as well as Real Motivation Monk. I'm available on both on Instagram. I do put a lot of reels and posts on Instagram, which will be quite useful for you to understand and love yourself with history. Now, in the previous two sessions, we did discuss about uh, Lord Canning. Then I also gave a brief overview about uh, Lord Elgin and uh, Lord John Lawrence. Now, the next uh, important viceroy whom we will be dealing with is Lord Mayo. Mayo came to India in 1869. He stayed in India till 1872. He was originally known as Richard Southwell Burke, 6th Earl of Mayo. Uh, Mayo was actually not his full name. It was his real name was Richard Southwell Burke. He was an, also an Irish statesman, just like Sir John Lawrence, who came before him. And uh, he served as a viceroy from uh, 1869 to 1872. Just locally in, in, in India, he's uh, referred to as Lord Mayo. Now, Mayo play, played a substantially important role. He came quite qualified. He was an earl. His father was an earl. He was born to Robert Burke, the fifth earl of Mayo, and uh, Anne Charlotte Burke. So he was actually from the elite lordships of uh, England. He finished his studies in Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland. He traveled extensively throughout Russia after finishing his education. So he's well known to the world. Thanks to his different travels, the knowledge he would gain from his travels would be extensively useful in the later stages of his career, particularly in India. From 1847 to 1868, he was a very important member of the British Parliament and he represented various constituencies, particularly Kildare, Coleraine and Cockermouse. In 1852, 1858 and finally in 1866. The Earl of Mayo was actually appointed the Chief Secretary of Ireland, just like the previous Viceroy. He is coming from extensive amount of experience working in other British princely provinces. It was in 1869 that he would be appointed as the fourth Viceroy of India after Canning, Elgin, Lord John Lawrence. So he is going to be the fourth Viceroy to come to India, Lord Mayo. Now in 1871, Mayo actually did some very important reforms when he came. He was one of the first viceroys to order a census in India, which produced a general picture of the subcontinent, its population size, its people, and its uh, status. He was also in charge of the Indian Statistical Survey. He established the Department of Revenue and Agriculture and Commerce. So he did good amount of uh, reforms in the administration features. He also improved the sanitary conditions of the troops in India. Now, one important introduction which happened during his period was the introduction of the Snyder rifle in the field artillery guns. He made improvements to sanitary conditions of the troops, infrastructure development in the country, including massive extension of roads, railroads and canals. He continued the policy of masterly inactivity. He did not want to get into extension or expansion of the British princely state in India. He just continued the British rule without messing around too much with India. He did not disturb Indian kings. Lord Mayo was also interested in prison reforms, particularly for the convicts of uh, Andaman Islands. During his period in 1872, the Indian Evidence Act was passed. You can say one of the most significant legal reforms to be introduced in India. And uh, this anomaly and differentiation were eliminated by the Act. The anomaly of uh, the interpretation of Indian evidences was completely removed. Previously, legal system differentiated and applied according to the caste, community and social group in the question. Now, that is gone thanks to Indian Evidence Act. He gave structure to a judicial evidence system. He also established the state railway system. And in 1972, he started the financial decentralization process. May Resolution 1870 was where the financial decentralization of India began. Mayo drastically cut down military spending and other civil administration expenses. He also instituted a salt tax, raised the income taxes of the people. He gave provinces the authority to, to use local taxation to balance their budget. So Madras, Bombay, Calcutta were given the authority to adjust their revenues based on the taxes which they were collecting in their respective provinces. 
On June 9, 1871, Lord Mayor founded the Department of Revenue, Agriculture and Commerce as well as the Land Improvement Act. He spoke vehemently about the necessity for promotion of primary education among Indians, among the natives. Mayo established a system of uh, codified laws that would be effectively implemented for the benefit of inmates. He founded the Rajkot College in Katiawad and uh, Mayo College in Ajmer, two most important senior colleges. These are active even today. Mayo was assassinated, slain by a convict named Sher Ali in 1872. Mayo also helped to stabilize India's northwestern borders by strengthening relations and ties of India, the British India, with Afghanistan's Emir. Sher Ali. Mayo also, he primary aim by Mayo was doing that is he wanted to reduce the Russian influence in the subcontinent and he, he believed in establishing Afghanistan as a buffer state between the Russian provinces and the British provinces in India. In fact, such was the contribution of Mayo in India that years later, a newly discovered swallowtail buffalo, this one was in fact named after him Papilo Mayo from Andaman Nicobar and because he has been instrumental in doing uh, reforms at Andaman Nicobar Islands jail. He is also best known for infrastructure projects and building education institutions promoting primary education. Mayo College, one of the most expensive colleges in India is still active. It, is, it was established by him in 1875 mainly to educate the Rajput princes to be the next future um, pillars of the British rule in India. Okay, now that's Lord Mayo. Lord Mayo was eventually followed by Lord Northbrook. Lord Northbrook. Now Northbrook became Viceroy of India from 1872 to 1876. He was born in 1826 January. Northbrook was the eldest son of Francis Barron, the Baron of Northbrook, and uh, Jane Grey, the daughter of Sir George Grey, first Baron. Now, obviously. He's also, if you see his, the way his birth and his qualifications, he's coming from the elite of England. During Northbrook's period, Northbrook served as a viceroy from 72 to 76. Now, one of the most important events that we observe during his Northbrook's rule, or Northbrook's viceregality, is the deposition of the Gaikwad of Baroda in 1875. The visit of Prince of Wales, the great Bihar famine, the Kuka movement, particularly in Punjab, are some of the most significant events that we'll observe now. Just check one of these. Deposition of Gaikwad of Baroda. Now, Baroda was being ruled by uh, Raja Khandera Gaikwad until 1870. He was uh, supposed to be succeeded by Malhar Rao Gaikwad, his brother, after his death. But Malhar Rao was a very rash and extravagant splendor, as well as a very despicable tyrant. So at that time, British resident of Baroda <coughs> who unfortunately died in mysterious circumstances, Northbrook removed Malhar Rao Gaikwad from the throne of Baroda. As a result, the British intervened and uh, Malhar Rao um, uh, was deposed in 1875 and exiled uh, to Madras on the orders of Lord Salisbury. In 1882, Malhar Rao actually died in obscurity. In a way, if you observe the event of Gaikwad which we see, after a prolonged period, this is one of the first times British are actually intervening in one of the issues of the princely states of India. This was an example of use of supreme power, the paramount sea power, to punish acts of excessive criminal misconduct conducted by a chief or his ministers. In 1876, during uh, Northbrook's period, Prince of Wales, Queen Victoria's eldest son, visited India. He arrived in Bombay, he went to Madras, Ceylon, finally in Calcutta. The primary purpose of the visit was to instill loyalty among the Indian princes to the British Emperor and affirm their central role in empire's survival. Now, these loyal Indian feudatories, Indian kings, showered their loyalty to Prince of Wales by giving him invaluable gifts wherever he went. In fact, Prince Edward amassed so much wealth in six months that one of his ships was completely filled with jewels, paintings, antiques, live animals, embroidery, brocades, various forms of contemporary art of India of that period. Today, it's part of one of the largest collections of the British Museum. He, he which is in the Prince, the, the Prince returned and the gifts were displayed for six months in England. In exchange, Prince of Wales presented Indian kings with a copy of Rig Veda, which was translated 
by Max Muller. A very important event which happened during uh, Northbrook's period is the Namdhari or the Kuka movement. Kuka movement was uh, founded on the saying of or the idea of reciting God's name. Now it basically was led by Baba Ram Singh and uh, originally it was by probably either uh, Balak Singh ya Bhagwat Jawahar or Bhagwat Jawahar Jawahar. The idea of the Kuka movement was that they frequently developed emotions reciting the name of God. But they used to sound uh, Kukas or make loud, loud shouts of Kuka Kuka. They took turbans in their hands and uh, hair streaming in the air and uh, they were generally known as, that's why the, the, they used to go in a trance. It was more like a trance. This type of behavior is also observed in Muslim um, uh, dervishes, uh, the, the Sufi saints that you observe. Baba Ram Singh was, although the Kuka movement was originally only a social religious movement, it was Baba Ram Singh who made it a political movement. He and his followers became cattle protectors, resenting both Muslims who killed cows and Britishers who allowed cow slaughter. In 1870, a group of these followers uh, assassinated Muslim butchers in Amritsar. Eventually, as a result, few Kukas were executed by the British, but Kuka movement became very important because they opened up an opportunity for probably a revolt. In 1872, there was larger uprising. The Kukas attacked the Muslim community and uh, the government reacted very harshly on uh, about 68 Kukas were apprehended. 50 of them were blown up with guns the very same day they were arrested without any legal procedure and uh, 17 on the next day. Baba Ram Singh himself was charged with aiding abetting crime, eventually transported to Rangoon jail. The movement although received a very small amount of support from mainstream Sikh because most of the Sikhs at that time remained extremely loyal to the Britishers. Another event of Lord Northbrook's period is the Great Bihar Famine. 1873-74, Bihar had a severe famine. Surprisingly, during the famine, the British government actually resorted to a massive relief effort, something which we have never seen in British uh, Indian history of India by the Bengal government resulting in literally no casualties so this was probably the so remember this is an important point Bihar famine 73-74 during North Brooks period is one of the only famines where there was extensive amount of support given by the British which led to nearly no casualties among Indians this policy never really was followed by uh, the subsequent viceroys like Lord Lytton another great famine struck in South India and Lytton did very little and many people died during Lord Lytton's period who succeeded Lord Northbrook. Northbrook also started the IMD, Indian Meteorological Department in Calcutta and uh, it was eventually located to Shimla then to Pune and finally to New Delhi. The income tax which had been in place since Lord Canning's time, remember 500 rupees if they have income, they need to pay 5% income tax, was very unpopular and Northbrook actually repealed it. So he removed income tax. So Canning started it, Northbrook removed it. Intercaste marriages were permitted during Northbrook's period and civil marriages and Arya Samaj marriages were also permitted under the exclusively made Universal Marriages Act of 1872. So for the time he was here, Northbrook has had some great achievement. So for the time he was here, Northbrook has had some great achievements to name with. So he was an energetic reformer, he permitted intercaste marriages, he ensured, he also gave legal permissions to Arya Samaj marriages. Other than the Baroda intervention, even in the Baroda intervention, he was actually interfering because the Malharao Baroda King Malharao Gaikwad was pretty bad criminal. He was not really um, good, even neither for the British nor for the people. So, in an effort to reduce both starvation and widespread social unrest, he reduced taxes. He also helped in the Bihar famine. Um, after he went to Britain, uh, he was given the rank of Law First Lord of Admiralty, which is almost like the Chief of British Navy. That's the story of Lord Mayo and uh, Lord Northbrook. These were another two important uh, viceroys who played a substantially important role in continuing the efforts of Lord Canning and the uh, subsequent uh, Lord Elgin and uh, Lord John Lawrence. Okay. Now keep following me guys. Uh, like, Do like, subscribe this channel and uh, in the description I've given the videos of the previous Lord Canning and uh, the uh, viceroy of uh, um, Lord Elgin and uh, Lord John Lawrence. Keep following me on history, the story of history. In this series, we will see, see we'll be seeing some interesting aspects about Indian history. Thank you. Bye-bye. Do like and subscribe and share this video to as many people as you can. Bye-bye.